everybody. It is January and it's a little cooler here. We are going to have a really great time today. Um, I first want to introduce everybody that's here to you know where we are located. Uh, I'm my friend Dustin from France, who's I think on the lower screen. I want to say hi, Dustin. Hi. And hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. And we've got Dan and Marge from Greenville. Say hi. Howdy, everyone. And Robin and I, and we're about a um, quarter mile away from Dan and March, zooming in. Robin, myself, okay. We're going to go into this one. It's going to be a really good one, guys. So hang on to your hats. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right. Okay. And as always, um, we're just saying, hey, you may want to taste with us, fence with us these wines. And if you want to, you may want to go buy these wines and then stop the recording here stop watching the recording here and then come back but at any rate we're doing red bordeaux and we're doing one wine from the right bank one wine from margot and one wine from the left bank margot is technically left bank but it's a different nature wine so i think these three should make a really good and i think it's going to be a high end I emphasize high end tasting underlying expensive <laughs> um we're going to sense these three wines from three different regions. They're all Bordeaux. They're all known as Bordeaux. We're going to be using the UC Davis 20 point system and we've got more crisp terms because we updated our terms based on the uh, uh, International Sommelier Guild. Um, and you're going to know really the different styles of Bordeaux when we're through with this. We hope that's the plan. But just a little background. Um, the French wine classifications. Uh, in the late 1800s, uh, France was hit by a uh, huge, well, all of Europe, uh, phloxera, and it killed all of the roots of the grapevines. Fortunately, American rootstock was resistant to it. They brought that over and they replanted. But during that time, there was a lot of fake wine or wines that pretended they were from a certain region that would go on the market. And all these wineries that had been there for hundreds of years were very, very upset about these fakes coming on the market. So that really spurred the requirement for sophisticated wine laws and wine regulations. Uh, and they were developed in the 1930s, the ones that we're pretty familiar with. But then 2009, you've got the European Union coming along looking for a classification system. And so they adopted the French one with a couple tweaks. Uh, and then 2012, the France started, France started to modify its traditional one to blend in with the new European Union. So at any rate, we've always known of Vin de France. It's, a vin, it's, it's table wine, lowest classification. Uh, and that is uh, uh, still going to be Vin de France, Vin de table. The next level up that I was known as Pay Doc, uh, and this said it was known as Vin de Pays, is now known as Indication Géographique Protégée. And that represents about 32% of the wine in France. And what it means is there are limited controls on it, some controls about alcohol levels, there's some quality testing done, but it's not anywhere near as rigorous as the highest level. Appellation d'origine protégée. And that used to be known as Appellation d'origine contrôlée. And that's like 47% of them. But what you now see on wine bottles and the labels that you buy will say AOC slash AOP. They're in the process of transitioning over. And they're allowing them to go until all the labels are used up. Um, and this, when you're in that area, this is what really makes France famous for wine. The controls are so specific on grape growing and winemaking, extremely specific. Uh, one other classification unique to Bordeaux is the world famous 1855 first growth classification. It was based on selling prices over the prior 100 years. And when they finished that classification, they only named four wines premier crews, 16 wines second growth, and on down. Uh, and even a couple of their world famous white Chateau de Cam, or their white wines that were developed with Noble Rye. It's the really sweet dessert wines. Got a very, very high level classification. One of the famous quotes that came out of all this is stated here. 
first I am, second I was, mouton does not change. This was a quote from Baron Philip de Rothschild when he finally got his wineries and chateaus wine elevated to a growth status in 1973. He was very upset that it took that long. I'm gonna zoom in on this for a second so we can talk just a little bit about the left bank and the right bank. The left bank was originally totally flooded. And the Dutch came along, the great shipping folks, and they drained it with their dikes and dams. And this is called, this area here is called the Bas Medoc, B-A-S Medoc, or just Medoc. It means lower Medoc. They took up the Bas because they thought they were afraid it would mean it was less quality wine. There is a forest over here which protects uh, Bordeaux from the strong winds coming up. They've got a warm Caribbean uh, coastal wind that comes flying in here and keeps it pretty temperate in this whole region. The grout, the, excuse me, the soil all along here is very famous because it's gravel uh, on top of limestone. And Cabernet Sauvignon loves that soil. Uh, the key regions, which, key villages we're talking about inside Haute Medoc, which is the most famous red Bordeaux region, St. Estaph, Poyac, St. Julien, and Margot. There's a couple smaller ones, but I think those are the major four ones. But if you're ever looking for a really good left bank Bordeaux, and these are predominantly Cabernet Sauvignon. Over here, you see saint Emilion and Palmerol. Those are the two famous villages for right bank Bordeaux. They're primarily Merlot. The soil is primarily clay. It's a little too cool here to really ripen Cabernet Sauvignon grapes. And then you'll just other reasons you've probably heard about between these two rivers, entre deux mer, that means between two seas. They're more famous for whites. Grob's still pretty famous for some pretty nice uh, Bordeaux. Okay, but that's kind of the long and short of um, the geography of the area. It's a maritime climate. Uh, that means it's got mild summers and mild winters. This is a left bank we're talking about. And the key area again is Haute Medoc. One of the most famous chateaus there is Coste de Trinel. Uh, in St. Estaph, the northern most of these uh, districts, slower to mature. Uh, I have a St. Estaph and Dustin has a St. Estaph. So they're going to be slower to mature, higher in tannins, and more acid than their southern sisters. Puyat is the most famous. And that's where you find the Lafitte Rothschild, the Mouton Rothschild. They considered the most famous Bordeaux and the most, and the best place probably in Europe for sure for Cabernet Sauvignon wines. Powerful, elegant, long lived, da da da, and have a nice price tag. Uh, Julien, Saint Julien is right between uh, Poyac and Margaux. Doesn't seem real distinctive, but you may have seen now and then Chateau Gloria. And then the one that they probably consider more feminine, uh, more romantic, softer of these regions would be considered Margot and the world famous Chateau Margot. This is a picture of the city of Bordeaux. It was really, um, and still is, a center of commerce. And the wine will be shipped up and down the rivers coming out of here. So if you were a winery or had a, had a main office, shipping point located in this port, you had a leg up on everybody else. And this is an example of what the chateaus in the left bank pretty much looked like. Uh, they're back from the road. It is very hard to taste here. I mean, you've got to know somebody who knows somebody. And there aren't that many of them, and they are aristocracy. They're the wine aristocracy, and it's handed down from family to family. If your family owns one of these chateaus, that's what you'll do for a career. That's what your kids are going to do. Right bank. Predominantly below. Uh, it's cooler. 
limestone and clay soils, much smaller estates and smaller volume. The production here, so some of these wines you're gonna be hearing about on this side tend to be more expensive because they're much harder to get. There's such few ones uh, produced every year. But San Emiliano, I'm pretty crazy about. It's a really neat cobblestone city. Uh, they're famous, one of their famous chateaus is Cheval Blanc. But with these wines being Merlot based, uh, they're softer, uh, juicier characteristics, uh, more um, approachable younger. Uh, Palmerol, really interesting. One of the famous wines, Chateau Pintou, is, as it turns out, like 100% Merlot. And that's amazing to me. Given that in Bordeaux, there's five grapes you can make a Bordeaux from, um, this right bank pretty much uses Merlot often with Cabernet Franc. And Cabernet Sauvignon will be third in front of Malbec and Petit Verdot. And Malbec and Petit Verdot don't play much of a role in any of these pretty famous wines. This is a, a picture of what San Emiliano looks like. It is this very quaint cobblestone, really, really neat town. I highly recommend it. What we've been doing the last couple of times is doing um, appearance and nose, appearance and nose, appearance and nose, and then going taste, taste, taste. So that way you can compare more appearance and nose across the three. So instead of going all the way down and tasting one on all three dimensions, we'll hit them all pretty quickly. I was just trying to read what I had in print up there for this first wine that we have. And it's uh, San Emilion. Um, so everybody has, uh, uh, what, what kind of left bank wine do you have, Dan and Marge? We have a... That's right, you said left, left, left. You said left is left. Yep, one second. He's, up, he's, he's, he's getting it. I gotta go to the other left. <laughs> I have a Chateau... La Saison, La Nassan, Haute Medoc, 2017. Oh, okay, very good. And Dustin has a San Emilion. And Dustin, yours is... Yeah, mine is uh, yours is up a level for mine up. in classification because mine says, San Emilion had its own classification to make things more interesting. But mine is San Emilion Grand Cru. Yours is San Emilion Grand Cru Class A. And that's the second level. Mine's the uh, third. They have their own. Apparently San Emilion... Yeah, Go ahead. No, no, no. I was saying mine was uh, recommended to mine the good people at the Senate and, uh, and, you know, so I have to thank them for their expertise. I really know nothing about wine. I, I'm honestly here to learn. So, sorry, keep going. Oh, no. If I'm, okay, now the first thing we're going to do, and I, the terminology I have in the spreadsheet now is very um, up, updated with the Samelia Guild's latest terminology is much more crisp and precise. They're trying to make sure that everybody who tastes has a common denominator to talk to other people. So they're trying to have us be more specific. For example, on clarity, they want us to say, is it bright, clear, dull, or cloudy? We don't see that, do we? So anyway, you'll see up here, I put the details of the San Emilion we're having. And it's vintage rating is at 95T. It means 95 out of 100. T means it's still tannic. It's considered kind of young as a 2015. But here's this new, more crisp terminology where the options are all clarified there. So it's bright, clear, dull, or cloudy. And what do you say, Robin? Well, it's a little bit uh, pale. It's, uh, I would say, of that, of those four, I would say it's a, a little dull. Yeah, I would as well too, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not clear. I, ours is a deep red. That's the color. Clarity. Clarity. I think ours is a little dull as well. It's not bright. It's not cloudy. But we're kind of in the dark here because if I open the drapes, the whole left side of the room gets bathed in light and we look really odd. So we're just kind of 
tasting in the dark. Let me open it a little bit more because it is hard to see. Also, just a reminder. Yeah, mine's kind of, it's a little bit good. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's already seven o'clock here, so it's really uh, not the best viewing conditions. And I don't actually have great glass viewing it, but it's uh, it's opaque. It looks full, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit rich, but um, it's also really, really, uh, you know, pungent. It's not a bad smell. It's just a strong, um, strong odor of the grape. The condition in the nose is it clean or flawed? Mm, it's so clean. Very clean. Clean, yeah. Clean. Clean. Mm -hmm. And I should have put that up higher. Whatever. Um, oh, and then they said when you're talking about its age in the nose, they said it should either be youthful or developing. And this would, might be considered youthful considering it's just a 15 and it's got a ways to go. But I'll leave that up to you guys. What is that? Very un like it's hard to determine. And ours is 2017, so it's younger than yours. Yeah. All right. I don't know what a developed bouquet is compared to this one. So. And they, when they're talking about intensity, uh huh. they said, when they say all the way at the end, pronounced, they mean you're not even coming close to it and it gets you. But um, medium and medium intensity in the nose would be you get to the edge of it and you go, yeah, I, yeah. I, don't, have, I don't have to work to get it. And I'm getting a bouquet. Yeah, you don't even have to put your nose in them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's there. Everybody said medium? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, medium's good. It's like a spell. Okay. Then, um, what is it? Is it first of all floral, fruity, mineral, or oak? Any of those? And then more specifically, but what I loved about this when I was opening these early this morning to make sure they were good is this one had a little bit of toast on it. Oh, I got toast. I mean, I'm getting a little bit of wood, a sweet vanilla, vanilla toast. Mm -hmm. I think this one is very fruity smelling. And I think it's earthy. Earthy. But it's got a lot of fruit in it. I don't know. You got. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that I said earthy. It's a little bit, um, I tell it was earthier, like a kind of, uh, like a burnt flavor, burnt kind of smoke. But the floral and moodiness definitely stands above the two from my perspective. Mm -hmm. Marilyn, you have to remember, I spend a lot of time in the garden in the dirt. Ah, so she's pulling out her earthy nuts. She's growing sunflower seeds, Dustin. That's right. Oh, you can definitely send some of those this way. They, not a sour seed culture, really. It's, it's one of the many things that are defined in friend I, uh, that I miss. <laughs> okay, we're going to slip. And I know you're dying to taste that one, so I'm not going to let um, we're going over to the next one. Okay. We're really going to compare these one to the other in terms of appearance and nose. Yes. And this for us is a 1988. Wow. 30-some 30, 30 year old Pierre Lachine that has been in the cellar for a very long time. I took the cork out today and it's in wonderful shape. It was never going to break. And it's two thirds of the way covered with red. It's a longer cork than I've seen before. It took me a long time to get it out. I heard it might break, and it wasn't ready to at all. Okay, the one we've got now. This is Margot, and I'm just crazy about Margots because they're generally balanced between Cab and Merlot. So they soften that Cab, but they make a nice balance. Um, but we're now going to talk about appearance. What does it appear compared to the last one? It's a little richer. Oh. More opaque? Deeper? Oh no. Is it, would you call it bright, clear, dull, or cloudy? I don't like your classification. I don't like that classification either. Would you, well, um, let's skip that classification then. <laughs> I would say it's a deep. Um, 
it's deeper than the other one to ours is anyways ours is too Again, I can't really give a good read on the visual just because uh, I have so much heterogeneity between the glasses that uh, honestly it doesn't, it's really not useful. But um, it does seem to be a darker color. I can't tell if it's darker than the first one. I think it's yeah, more it's opaque than the first one. Oh, it's deep. And it's dark, darker garnet. Yeah. This Ours is, most, is probably going to be more brown and orangey yeah. on the rim because of the age. I would describe this one more ruby almost. I don't know if that's possible. It's deep. Well, I don't know. Is ruby darker than garnet? I don't know. No, garnet's dark. dark. Yeah, it's dark. Ruby's, uh, I don't, ruby's kind of between purple and red. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else about the appearance? I also like, like, how does it move in the glass? They don't ask you that. This one still seems to be moving like a lighter line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, definitely. I noticed that when I was decanting it. I noticed that it seemed lighter than the other ones. Huh. Interesting. Both pretty lighter. Okay. Now, in the nose, line number two, your Margot. We got, I got musty, dusty. Yeah, that's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> not yes, that's as strong as the other one either. We got it. We got one that is, you would call developed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a few years older than everything everyone else is tasting. <laughs> yeah. But I can't get this thing. Back. Ours has a much less pronounced bouquet than the first one. It's there, but it, you, the first one you can almost, as you're approaching the glass, you can get the bouquet. Is this one you really gotta stick your nose in it to get it? Chateau La Tour de Bassin. Is that what we have? Yeah. We have a Chateau Latour du Bassin, but it's new. 2017. Well, let me type. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop and come go out and come back in because it, it's giving me a hard time with my chart here. Yeah, that's not a uh, bump getting this glasses. Uh, it's uh, Margot from 2015, and it's not really uh, strong on the nose. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's just it's just not nearly as strong on the nose. But, you know, it's, um, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Anything more than musty, dusty? Okay. <laughs> Are we getting any fruit out of this old one? Yeah, a little bit of alcohol. I smell a little alcohol, like alcoholish. Any alcohol? I'm getting berry. Um, but, um musty dark, mus musty black cherry. Uh, yeah. Getting light berry. We're getting musty black cherry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost yeah. had tobacco for a minute. I don't know. Ah, you can. What is that? Too? Well, I'm just not getting dark. much of any out of this one. What are, you, uh, what are you getting? What are you getting, Dustin? I'm not getting much of any. I'm not getting much of anything in terms of the the uh, smell. The uh, yeah. it's really just light. It's so light that uh, you know, I'm really curious how it tastes, especially in comparison to the first one. Um, but for the most part, you know, it's it's really just a muted sense on the nose, and uh, you know, we'll you're really swirl are you really swirling? Are you really swirling it heavily in your glass? It says to swivel gently. But yeah, I mean, I'm giving. Yeah, it's just not coming. I'm you got it. Okay. I got it. It's looking like the first one hit, but it's still, uh, it's a, there's a smell there. It's, you know, if I describe it, it would be, you know, uh, fruity more than anything, but just so, uh, dude. All right, I'm going to go on to the Saint. I have a Saint Ass stuff, and Dustin has a Saint Ass stuff. I don't know what Dan March, what do you guys have? We have a Graves. Grave de Goujon. Grave? A Grave, yeah. yeah. That's La it. La 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 de Pomeron. And it's oh, very two, good. 2016. 2016. Uh, Dan, hand it to me so I can read it and talk into it. This one's 
Really? Okay. Yeah. Grotte Goujon, La Lande de Pomeral, uh, 2016. Appellation La Lande de Pomeral and Contrôle. That should be the color. Color? We got a deep color. We got a deep kind of ruby. And the one we have is a combination Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, we got Franc. Deep. Um, yeah, around the edges, it's a ruby like. And some, and yeah, mine's color. quite dark. It's a. Uh, Go ahead. No, it's a uh, mine's pretty dark. It's very uh, it has own characteristics. But again, I I'm just struggling with glassware today. <laughs> you know, that's an understatement. But uh, oh, yeah. I hope that it will, um, you know, this makes it kind of difficult to get a proper read on the. It's like this is one that takes a little bit more ruby. Yeah, ruby. we agree. Yeah. yeah, I was comparing it to the first one, and it's. Not quite as dark or intense, and it's more ruby than uh, garnet, but it's very subtle in terms of the color difference. And you, if you saw them from a distance, you couldn't tell the difference, but if you put them together, you can see the very subtle Not difference. Together, if you put them side by side. Side by side, yes, <laughs> side by side. All right, now we're going to do the nose. Uh, clean, flawed. We're in the development. Hmm. Not much. There's not much in ours. Yeah, ours, is, not much nose. This is tougher to get mm -hmm. than the it other is, two. A lot more subtle. Yeah, there's hardly anything here. Very I mean, there's fun. something, but it's it's very, it's the least aromatic of the three. The light intensity for sure, then. Light. Yeah, I, I'd agree with like that for my own. You know, it's not it's strong in the, the smell. It's a 2014, uh, but it's, it, you know, it's there. Marilyn, I think it's more floral than anything. It's so light. Let's see what this Yeah, you've got a 14. Uh, Dustin. Okay, get ready because we could lose our uh, internet access anytime here. Okay. Okay. Um, but what what's the fruit you're getting? Is it fruit? Is I it think fruit? floral. Yeah. Floral, not even fruit. What did you say? Floral. Oh, floral. 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 Yeah, me me. I'm actually getting light berry like and uh. You know, I'm picking up a ton with my nose, and uh, um, you know, it's just not very fragrant. We're getting subtle black cherry. Wow. Subtle what? Black cherry. Cherry. You see, ours is 65% cab, 30 below, 10 cab funk. Somebody else. Okay. Now we're going to go and taste. The first one, remember it's on the right bank, and this is the one that um, no, right we seem the lightest in the glass. Right bank, but doesn't mean no, you mean left bank. You mean left bank, right, for tasting first? We're doing the right bank first. That's oh, the one okay. we just put away, right? That's no. the one. No. no, we've been doing right bank, Margot, left bank. We may have, have you guys switched around? I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure you said left bank to start, Marilyn. Well, we'll go right. We'll do okay, right. we want, like I was saying, we wanted to start with the lighter bodies. And the right bank has more love. And then more go, and then more that. robust one. Well, then right. change up. <laughs> well, keep the, Mar keep the Margot, but. That was I'm good. sorry. I'm sorry. Guys. Yeah, all right. All right. But it's, it's right bank. Yeah, Okay. So I usually start with much what I'll call wussier. All right. So white right bank first, correct? 
Okay. All right. We're done. We're back to Santa Maria. For number one. That's primarily, and this one had toast on it. No, that's that's her wine name. The questions are, it's pretty easy to say it's going to be a dry wine. Now, the next ones are, are you detecting acidity and at what level? Are you detecting alcohol and at what level? Tannin at what level? Acidity is high. How I test it. <laughs> mm. And then see what doesn't say them out. It it puckers my mouth, but it and it means there's got to be tan in there, but it's a different kind of tan than I'm used to tasting. It's um mm. light dry. Yeah, very dry for sure. You put light tan in. Yeah. What about alcohol? It's kind of warm in the mouth. And... Maybe that's what I'm tasting is the alcohol to give it that different taste of the tan on tannin. On our chart. It shows it has more alcohol than the other ones. But we're not picking up much in the mouth. On, I on think this that's one. what I'm trying to describe is when I say that it's got that different tannin taste. I think, and Margie said she thought she had a taste of or a, an aroma of alcohol with this one, and maybe that's what I'm tasting. What are you getting, Dustin? Yeah, I'm getting low medium alcohol in the taste. Uh, this one, I got. Yeah, but I, I, I wasn't getting a ton of um, alcohol flavor. I was getting a kind of off dry taste. It's really smooth. Kind of like this one for what it's worth, but it's um, yeah. I mean, some of that is just the the floralness of it. I mean, the flavor, the smell, just really just kind of hits right away, and it's easy to enjoy just by itself. I don't know what it pairs like with with food, but um, just sipping on it now is um, you know, it's good. Off That's, dry, medium, low alcohol, I'd say. Yeah, you've got the second level of Cinnamillion, which is. Uh, I, you know, I just had really had the chance there, like the luck. Um, you know, there's a really, really nice uh, sales salesperson at the the cave there. And she um, she gave some great insight. She actually has sold wine in Greenville too. She was telling me about her experience there and. Really. And kind of yeah. Um, her name's Elodie, and she works at. The Senate, uh, the Cave Senate, which is I think pretty well known gate in Crest. It's uh, in the sixth area, the sixth area, the sixth arrondissement. They do, you know, it's there, and um, yeah, it's worth a visit next time you guys are in France or in Paris. You should just go and check her out and say hi at the least. You know where Roquefort's from? Roquefort. Uh, we're here. Avignon. Avignon. No, no, no. Bavaria, Michelin's area. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, Dustin was talking about uh, his Saint Emilion in the mouth. You want to recap that, Dustin? Yeah. Uh, the long and short of it is, uh, it's you know pretty. It's pretty dry. I would say medium, off dry, if we if we want to call it that. But the uh, you know the alcohol content doesn't really overpower, and it's it's quite nice. It's uh, you know, it's something that tastes well by itself. I don't know how it pairs with other foods or if it's something that people would, you know, want to eat with like cheese and bread or do anything. things like that. The spreadsheet just keeps, my spreadsheet just keeps bailing on me. Hmm. Uh, it won't let me write in it. So I'm keep going out, going back in. It's always the first time. Yep. And you say that. Ours uh, definitely has a, French wine, you can tell the difference between French wine and American wine. This is definitely a French wine. And I wouldn't sip it. I would have to have it with a meal, but I'm not sure if I'd want to have it with a steak because it's not full enough, but I don't know what you'd have it with. 
Is How about you, Marge? Mm, probably. Okay, and you all were just saying that you didn't, what did you think about it with acidity? What did you think about it with uh, tannin, tannin mod? Had light tannin, had a taste of alcohol. Um, it was much lighter tasting than I thought it would be based on its color, although it was the lightest color of the three. But I still thought it would be more full bodied, but it wasn't. It was similar to a Pinot Noir almost. Acidity, uh, low tannin, Robin, and uh, alcohol low. Yeah. How old is the wine you're drinking, Marilyn? Fifteen. Two thousand fifteen, also okay. Was... We pulled all these from my cellar, actually. And I had worked really hard to get rid of my old wines. Yeah. If you all recall. Um, the finish, short. Yeah, I think that's relatively short. Yeah. Yeah. Not a big finish. Yeah. And I think mine was kind of a short tart. Short. Yes. Absolutely. To me, that's predominant. Yeah, this wine is uh, the one we're having. The Cinnamon Leon surprises me in its tartness. Okay. And now the bottom part, when we balance this wine, do we think it was balanced, the one you're drinking, do you think it was balanced between the nose and the mouth? I think the nose promised something in this one. I know, I was excited about it, and then I tasted it, and it, was, it didn't live up to it at all. Um, my nose wasn't very strong. Either. Yeah, we had a weak nose, and it had a weak tannin, and a weak taste, as far as I was concerned. Um, do you think it needs more time in the bottle? Do you think it'll age well? Mm, I'm not the right person to ask that. I don't like, I'm not, I'm not going to go out and buy another bottle uh, after this tasting. I'm going to switch over to Dustin. Um, how do you rate your first one, Dustin? You know, I would say that honestly, I, um, I like it overall, but um, I do think that it has for me, characteristics that I'd look for in a wine that I would just drink uh, by itself. Now, mm -hmm. again, pairing it with something else, I don't really know where or what I would put it together with. But uh, overall, you know, um, I would say it's more than passable. But I can remember that you've got, you know, keep saying, a higher classification than any of the rest of us. So that's hey, pretty good. 2014, uh, yes. Uh, now, everybody. <laughs> Everybody try your Margot. Okay. And I do have a Chateau Margot in the house and one in the cellar. I haven't opened it. It's like a, it's not a great year. I couldn't afford a great year, but there is one down there. Well, I was scared when we said yes. And then I went online to look at the cost of some of these wines and uh, Total Wine had several that they were recommending. It's uh, between uh, $300 and $1,700 a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Nuh-uh, nuh-uh, nuh-uh. Looks like that Margot, I bought futures. So we probably paid, you know, very little. Because we got it before the wine was even bottled. And then it's been in the cellar for 30 years. Mm -hmm. so. But now if you look at it, it'd be some ridiculous That's price. Awesome. Okay, this, this, we're gonna, ours is going to be musty, dusty mm -hmm. comments. But it's really good. <laughs> but it's really good, says Robin. Mm -hmm. It's not bitter, but it's really strong. <laughs> I don't think. I think. I think it's very smooth with hardly any. Oh my tannins. gosh! This is well. Yeah, it definitely is the smoothest. I would agree. It's um, it's really easy going. Because it's ours. Uh, the vintage for the one we're drinking was rated. I can scroll up, but like ninety-five R, and this is one of the first times I've seen like a French one with R, meaning it's ready to drink. They always say tea for tannin. But instead of saying this one's over the hill, and they're not. No. They're saying it still are. There you go. That's that's really good. It's got some. Yeah, I, I was tasting this one anyway. Well, I don't know the the I'm, I'm a big, I've got a lot of 15 Margots in the cellar because when 15 was was declared such a great year, I just 
bought a bunch because I said, okay. The years that ended in five tend to be great ones over there. And uh, so I will have some of those Bordeaux for a while. Now this one I could just picture drinking, sitting, taking your time, sipping on it because it is very smooth. There is some tannins there, but it's very smooth. Um, the it's got some berry taste, but it's a light berry taste. It's a much more subtle berry taste than you get from California wines. If you smell the berry in California, you taste the berry. No, you get snap. Yeah. Here it's there, but it's not, it's much more subtle. How do you talk about the difference between acidity and tannin? Um, acidity is called mouth watering. When you, when you do the reverse of a whistle or on the sides of your tongue where acidity is picked up and then you let go for a second, inside of your mouth waters. Mm -hmm. When you have tannin, the inside of your mouth dries. It's dry. It, it makes the inside of your cheeks kind of come together like, whoa, I think this is a little too dry. So well, one, one just creates saliva. Mm. That's acidity. Okay. Then I think this wine has acidity more than tannins. Do you agree with that based on what you just said? No, I didn't have any saliva in my mouth. But it didn't make your mouth pucker. And acidity also gives you tartness on the sides of the tongue. Yeah. That's another way to tell. Okay, Dustin. So I'm not sure about the acidity. I'm I'm not sure about the acidity versus the tannins, but I do agree with Dan that this is really a smooth wine that's really just easy to sip. Um, you know, I do like the the overall body and texture. I mean, it's just not too overpowering. Now, when I do the little exercise with the, you know, getting it on the sides of the mouth, it, uh, it does create some saliva, but not a lot. So, uh, you know, again, I don't really know how to best uh, rate that in terms of tannins versus acidity. But, um, no, it's a good wine. I mean, and I'm drinking the 2015, uh, you know, the Maison de Sun. Yeah, that's what it's called, Glass on de Sun. And what, what berry are you getting, Dustin? Yeah. Uh, berry wise, you know, I'm getting a lot of, you know, in the taste, like it is a little bit, it's definitely not as much cherry. It's a lot of grape. It really is just, um, you know, I think that's part of what, what makes it just so accessible just to sip. Uh, you know, for me, it's just a, uh, a grape flavor more than anything. And, um, you know, the alcohol content isn't overpowering again. So, you know, it's just easy. Like it. I just I love Margot's. I'm telling you, that's why I love because it, it's so balanced between. What we need to talk about, Robin, is what berry are we picking up? I'm not picking up strong berry. I'm this, picking up plum. Ours is so old. Oh. I'm picking up the skin of a plum when you bite into a plum. I can, I can pick up a very faint. Yeah. Uh, I don't think dark cherry, maybe think cherry, but not, and, and a little tart. You think tart a little bit? No. But don't you love a Margot, you guys? I just love a Margot. Well, I like it much better than the first. I can't tell you comparing to the left yet because we haven't got there, but of the two, this one is much more drinkable and much more enjoyable uh, than the first one. Yeah, I'm, I've always been crazy about Margot's, but not that I'm prejudiced. Um, the finish. <laughs> the finish. I like it. What do you think about the finish? Was it short? Was it long? It's a little longer. The it's, more I sip at it, the more it seems to linger with me, but not the very first sip. Yeah, you know, the, the finish finally is... Uh, you know, it's funny because I'm kind of comparing this to what I remember from the, the kind of uh, you know, Vin 2 tasting we did. And uh, yeah, it's a lot shorter than that, than that particular region. I mean, we're talking Chateau Neuf. We did, we did um, Grenache blends, Cote de Rhone. Yeah, yeah, the Cote de Rhone is shorter than that. But, you know, I feel like it's appropriate. It's, a, it's you know, again, it's what I think makes it nice to sip just because, 
for me, it's like I can sit, I can imagine eating something else or doing something else. And it's not like I have to sit in the wine moment for a very long time. And, you know, maybe that's just my my millennial attention span. It doesn't want to have that flavor in the mouth forever. But, uh, you know, I, I like it. I like it. Hey, hey. Um, okay, now an overall summary. Was it balanced for you, uh, Dan and Marge, between the nose and the mouth? Did it promise something in the nose that didn't come through? Did it promise something in the mouth that didn't come out in the nose? No, I think it was balanced. Yeah. I mean, when you tested the aroma and then you tasted it, I think they, the bouquet, it was uh, what I was looking for. It's what a little saying? lighter than I thought it was going to be based on the uh, the color of the wine, but it's still very balanced, I think. I thought it was going to be a little heavier wine, and it's not. Yeah, ours right. is pretty balanced. I mean, it was not overpowering in the nose, but it, and it wasn't overpowering in the taste either. But it was already at the end of its life. Mm -hmm. So we weren't going to get the berry powerful. You would get in a younger wine. Mm -hmm. We should have got more of what the vinification techniques did to it. Mm -hmm. I Meaning it was aged in oak. We should have gotten more of that because that would have come more to life as the tannins dissipated mm -hmm. as this wine aged. That's supposed to be what happens with this whole thing. Um, would this benefit from more age? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. And and then um, what would you eat with it? Mm. I don't think you'd eat a big steak, but you'd have okay. maybe pork or um, lamb. lamb, yeah, something like that. Chicken. Mm. Yeah, not chicken. The kind of chicken, depending if it was chicken with red sauce on it, maybe, I don't know. I don't think you can see this. Are you sharing? I don't think so. No, we need eel. <laughs> Return, oh, wait a second. Return to meeting. Now, share a screen. I'm going to show you something. These are foods Bordeaux are famous for being coupling with in France. Mm -hmm. When I was on my honeymoon and we were looking at what to get before I went over there, I kept going eels, yeah. eels. Mm -hmm. You know, how do I eat an eel? But because um, our honeymoon was in Bordeaux in 1988, the year of this wine. Mm -hmm. oh, well. Wow. Okay. Uh, and then Dustin. I I was I was I was one years old. <laughs> I was new to the world. Oh jeez. <laughs> well then you couldn't have gone. I, I was I wasn't there, but in spirit, I think I was I was cheering, you know, I was like I was cheering it all. He couldn't have tasted any wine though. No. <laughs> no. Although they let they let these kids out here in France drink all kinds of things way too early. That's my opinion, but you know, it's just a cultural thing. I, I I've seen it all, I'll say it that way. You're in the minority. <laughs> Dan I had to ask you, is your favorite yeah. cheese I forgot? Is it Roquefort or Blue? Blue. Blue, yeah. Well, that's a cheese we have here on the left. But they said the interesting thing about the cheese um, on this list, this is from the International Sommelier Guild. Um the cheese is, they say, really, Bordeaux well, isn't famous for cheese, so forget it. Mm -hmm. But they do, it does go well with Roquefort that really comes from Auvergne, which is Michelin's region in the middle of France. <clears throat> but they said none of these, the rest of these are <clears throat> worth squat. I would think some kind of mushroom dish. I don't know about chanterelles if they taste different than other mm. the mushrooms, but I think a mushroom dish would go really well with this. Yeah. Well, we got more I, poster. I, you, you, you want the fungi ones. <laughs> and once got a pizza in Houston that's all these fungi ones, and man, they're weird mushrooms. <laughs> Not, <laughs> okay, we're going on then to numero trois. Left bank. And the first thing we're going to ask is, could we dry? Any comment on acidity or tannin or alcohol in the mouth? We said in the nose, ours was light intensity, black cherry that was subtle. And ours was the opposite. Yeah, we totally don't believe us. 
I like it. Mm -hmm. I'm going. I like it. I can do it straight. It's a little, it's a, a little tarter, but it's, uh, I like it. So it smells like it's just tarter. Mm -hmm. Did you drink it in the right order? Yes, I did. Okay, good. Because you had yours in a different order to start with. Right, I, went, I switched them so they okay, were in the same order. Okay, order. oh, that makes you feel better. I don't even know if I like it. I'm not going to have to have this. Okay, it's not a little bit of huge, not like the first one, but it is a little harder than this one. Mm. Oh, yeah. You can't tell what we're taking when we're taking the left bank. I'm, I'm, I'm in deep like with this, so because it's it's bigger. It yeah, bigger. really. Big. They, they don't ask that question here. In 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 the glass, they should ask about the body, and they don't. In the mouth, they should certainly ask about the body, and they don't. That drives me crazy, because those are just key things. When the texture in your mouth and the and the feel is this a big body or a light body are so different, and appealing or not, so that kind of ticks me off a little bit. That's just me. Okay, Dan and March, what do you think about acidity and tannin and all that good stuff? It's really full. Yeah. Full mouth. I think big, big, big acidity, big tannin. Big tannin. And I was saying, I was saying to Marge before I sipped it, I said this is going to be the fullest bodied wine based on the way it looks in the glass and its color, and it was when we tasted it. It's got a big mouth feel for sure. Oh, I just got some tannin. <laughs> I think. <laughs> you get some tannin on that one, Rowan? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a little bit too. Like, um, you know, just based on like that control that you guys gave the, the little test with the saliva, it's definitely a little bit there. But um, again, I have a hard time telling the difference between that and the acidity. And, um, you know, I'm growing in that sense, but we'll see. I, I, I just spent some time after one of our tastings really diving into trying to get smarter on acidity because I didn't get it. And I learned a whistle, opposite of whistle, which was like a slurp. And it brought the liquid on each side of yeah. my tongue. And that gave it a chance, if it was really acidic, to speak to me. And it would be very tart. And it would create the watering sensation. I said, okay, I need to do that if people don't mind me being sounding like a pig. <laughs> and then, no, this is about the, wine. The tannin, the tannin just wine. talks to me and I don't even ask a question. It just goes, oh, that was dry. I mean, this is really dry. Inside, you've got dimples. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say our tannin is soft. It's not making me do what you're talking about it's definitely there but it's not a real harsh tannin that's a perfect know. adjective by the way you're an expert Dan. soft tannin is a very good term even they may not have it here on their options it is a good term so we said uh, i'm just going to make sure i'm keeping up on this because uh, this one I, uh, the one in the middle is the one i have to turn in to the international sommelier guild the other two i don't have on my list yet I'm redoing all my sommelier, my last sommelier courses, uh -huh. and on, for a given region, I have to take quiz, I have a, a text to read, I have a lecture to listen to, I have um, quizzes to take, and then I have essays to write, and, um, and oh, you have to do, I have to do 13 tastings, at least two to three wines at each tasting. And turn in your tasting notes every time. So, you know, what to do during the pandemic. That's right. Perfect. I understand. I understand. I liked your essay too, by the way, Marilyn. I thought I really it was great. And for me, again, it's always nice to read something because that's how I absorb information, honestly. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's all new to me. So I'm enjoying this experience, really. Mm -hmm. I, I I I didn't expect that. All of a sudden, I saw that. So I, I was starting to get the rhythm of the quizzes. All right, I'm ready. I got multiple choice. And I got no. So wait a minute. Essay that took a whole weekend. You know, like, so I'm looking at other sources. And everything. This last one's the same. But at any rate, uh, okay. 
should you need to submit that to New Yorker. We should mid body. We should, submit that we, we should Tannic. We should right. on ours. It was Tannic. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we said, what's the fruit? Mm. Mm. Everybody go back. Tell me what your fruit is. Well, I thought mm -hmm. it's, it's dark cherry or dark berry of some sort. And we're going to. I, I agree. We're having a steak tonight, and this is going to be perfect because it's got these soft tannins. And the, when we have the steak, it's going to even, it's just going to be getting, very nice with it. Ochre vanilla on yeah. about aging. Oh, vanilla. I'm not getting ochre vanilla on about aging that are somewhat, I'm, we're, I've got my cheat sheet here. And uh, it's either, it, it, it's good with just saying berry or not berry. Or are you talking about the vinification technique, which means oak? Or vanilla. Hmm. Vanilla. No, I don't taste vanilla. You have a taste of vanilla? No. And I would say it has a long finish, relatively long finish. You say mm -hmm. oak cherry? It has a relatively uh, long dried finish. Dried dried yeah, something like that. Dried yeah. cherry. We're we'll going with dried cherry. Full body flavor it is here. Full body. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a, a cherry finish, the uh cherry taste and a longer finish, I would say. You'd say um, this is the biggest this is the biggest body we've had so far, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, and it's gonna go great with your steak, you're right. Um uh, is yeah, the really, finish it really wouldn't go with the steak. What about the, the finish? Slow, medium, long. Long, I think. Long, long, long I second that. Yeah. Because the way they tell you in this class to measure it is, and we won't do it. But they want you to put it in your mouth, spit it out. No, who's going to and, 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 then, and then, how long does it last in your mouth? Oh. That's your, your professional wine tips. I go, yeah, right. Well, I just, you know what I paid for this? Never mind. <laughs> I'm going to spit that out. So we're saying it's long. Is there any flavor when it goes away? So I find that not nice. Well, Marilyn, if you, if you were volunteering, you know, we don't want you to be drinking all that Margo by yourself. So we soon we'll be uh, getting our vaccinations and whatnot. Did you get yours yesterday? Yes. All right. Good. So, I, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be 70% immune. And they were so terrific to me. It's a long story. We're getting ready to run out of time. But at any rate, um, they said at my second appointment for February 6th. Way to go. Okay, perfect. Where, and where did you get it done? Uh, um, Mount Pleasant near Charleston. It was a three hour trip. I left Ollie in charge and the house was still here. <laughs> He's such a good guy, aren't you? Say hi to everybody. Uh, that's my guy, where's Emmy? I mean, Heidi. Uh, Here's Heidi. I don't know if you know her, uh, Dustin, but this is Heidi. Yeah, I, I think I might have met Heidi the last time, but I know all of her. But you didn't met her in person. <laughs> yeah, no. You did meet at one of the tastings, um, Marge's sister from New Jersey. And she's the one that just gave them the core of them they're enjoying right now immensely. Absolutely. Okay. okay, we're gonna we're gonna describe this last wine overall. I'll go with Dan and March. What about the quality? Was it balanced? Mm -hmm. Did the nose promise something the mouse didn't deliver, or vice versa? You said you thought the color was gonna surprise you, or did you think everything was no, in no, line? No, no, I, I thought everything, I mean, Dan said everything was in line. Yeah. I thought the te the color and the taste were were balanced. It was mm -hmm. my favorite of the three. I don't know if it's. Oh, we, if I would always like the left bank better than the right bank. Uh, it's hard to tell when you just taste two wines, uh, one from each side. 
but definitely much nicer than the right bank. The Margot is something you drink uh, in the, you know, just a sip, I think. You're talking about just that one. Yeah, but this one I, I like a lot. And this one we'll have tonight. We'll report okay. on it. Okay, Justin, take it away. Yeah, if, if I had to rank order them, you know, I would probably go with the Margot and then the Saint Esprit after that, the Saint Emilion. I um I just like the Margot because it was just it was subtle. I think it's more of a not necessarily a quality thing. It's just a personal preference, and um, you know those are always subject to change. But the um, yeah, I mean it really it was just an easy wine, not a long finish, something that you can just sip and kind of hit about, and uh, you know that's kind of the the drinking attitude or mood that I'm in at the moment. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're all really great wines, and it's really the first time I've really focused on Bordeaux or had Bordeaux in general. Usually, um, you know, I'm drinking regional wines, which is the yeah. Cote de Rhone, like we did last time. And, uh, you know, we have uh, no shortage of Cote de Rhone's here, so, you know, that's probably what I'll end up drinking more of in the future, not necessarily out of preference, but out of the practicality and, of course, the price. So, uh, you know, I'll, um, I'll have to send you guys a bottle. <laughs> For so many of our earlier tastings, we really were watching the budget very, very closely because we were aiming at the millennials and their lack of interest in wine as a beverage when they go out to a restaurant because of the price differential. But I think it's it's nice now and then to really go upscale and really hit the wines that these regions are really famous for. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Justin, Justin, last time we did the coach around, Justin could go get his wine that I was drinking an hour away from where he was at the winery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're going, well, hello. No, there is, yeah. Yeah, I went going, yeah. <laughs> the same winery, I was busy trying to, but still, uh, I was going to disappoint that, but no, we're forward to that again. I'll get started up. So, anyway, okay, uh, Robin, if you had to rate these three, how would you rate them? I love the Margot, number one. And then second, and then last. Ah, she liked the Saint Emilion second. Okay, Dan and Marge. I, I like the Margot, and then I like the left bank rather than the right bank. And I thought that was, if you're going to be eating something, I think the left bank that we had would be a good one, but. And overall, I, I, I'll stop for a second and say, <clears throat> did you enjoy this tasting? If so, why? If not, why not? Okay, I was just gonna say that before you even ask any more. I like this way we did it, to do all three, first the nose and the, and the visual, and then the tasting. Because sometimes by the time you get to your third wine, uh, you know, if you're doing it the other way, it's just like, yeah, I liked it this way. I like this kind of a tasting. I think I mean, Marilyn, you should do your own 20, you should do your own 20 point tasting guide. Right, it's supposed to be more comparative. And that way, if we keep them closer, 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 right. to those two categories, then you come back. But what really drives me crazy is after I've done one and two on wine one, <laughs> oh, taste it. But yeah, right. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, a, an exercise in discipline. But speaking of that, uh, Dustin from the French yes. Foreign Legion, from yeah. the French Foreign Legion on the subject of discipline. Um, any comments you make? Did you like this kind of tasting? Did you like yeah. more of Well, again, like uh, I'm far from an expert on wines and, uh, you know, the discipline and just the practice is something I'm still picking up. I did like the order of the tasting a little bit better. I, I mean, I share your, uh, you know, your interest in just getting to the taste, but, uh, you know, this made me be a little bit more disciplined in just sensing the wines with the nose and the eyes more so than just jumping right in with the taste, which is something that, um, again, it's new to me. I, uh, I don't really sense that often with the nose and the eyes, but now it's becoming a little bit of a, uh, you know, of a habit. And I think it's a good habit just to, uh, to be able to understand, you know, the different wines that I'm tasting. So, yeah, again, it's, um, I did enjoy the tasting. I always feel like I learn a lot. And for me, that's a, uh, 
you know, that's a gift and it's something that, uh, you know, I'm hoping I can keep doing, keep, uh, keep doing with you guys. I got my little notebook here full of, full of, let me show my notebook that I've been taking in the middle of this thing. I'm, yeah, um, yeah, there's my little wine sketch, but, uh, you know, it's fine. That's, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's been, it's fun. If I didn't send you guys a spreadsheet before, then me a call book. Because now that everybody's going to be buying different ones, because we can't always, always get the same ones, uh, you got to have your own spreadsheet or just fill in your own ones. You should either have a blank one or do whatever you want that you want to do during these tastings. But the one thing I'd like to do next yeah. and take some time is doing a really good burgundy tasting. Because that's the next one in the class I'm taking, or retaking. Burgundy. And and it's, yeah, it's got uh, a tremendous. Well, I have to say also that doing it with a small group <laughs> over Zoom, I really liked it because sometimes when we had our large tastings, it was just too much with you really, you know, you weren't truly focusing on the on the wines. So I think this was really a good, a good experience. It was a good experience for me. Well, we are together as a group and we're, ah. we're having other conversations as well and yeah. Yeah. i thought you're talking about another zoom thing no no, no, no. no i was talking about some of our other oh yeah know, the big ones yeah we, we our, don't our in-person tastings which yeah we don't we don't well, a lot of fun but you, yeah they don't seem to be very really. serious mm -hmm. yeah yeah so how's right. your core man working so far so good yep <laughs> what's a great thing so uh i was Reluctant, like I say, because it was going to be so expensive to buy all these wines and know that we weren't going to drink them for the next week and they'd be bad by the time we got to drink them. But now I, this is wonderful to be able to taste them and then be able to open up the wines at a later date or just pour some out of what we want. So I think.